This is a continuation of what I started a little while ago, a day after an admirer of John Maynard Keynes, British economy, had messaged to me about ethics through an incredibly foolish claim that ethics didn't matter and that, quote, all ideas require force. Let's go over what he said there for a bit. It's as if voluntary ideas, according to him, don't exist at all or haven't ever existed at all. According to the Keynesian Dolt's incredibly wacky claim, it's as if everyone is forcing anything onto anyone all at once. For example, all party invitations, all of the friendly social gatherings, all of the plays, movies, TV shows, game developing, and so on, being the result from the initiation of aggression or defensive force. <laughs> if that were true, then humanity... <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just... I remember when he sent me, when he first sent me that message on Twitter. <laughs> if that claim were true, then humanity <laughs> wouldn't have evolved to adapt and live together in groups for very long at all. Keynesian adult wouldn't have been born. <laughs> I know I wouldn't have been born in the year 1984. It's possible that he, in part, did not mean what he said in a literal sense. However, he still rejected the basic fact that good ideas don't require the use of force. He didn't agree with this positive statement that good ideas don't require that. Did he object to this out of fear, ignorance, or both? I'd say it was both. For some reason, People being free as they possibly could be from aggressive force and coercion, and to fully recognize each other as self-owning human beings, is scary to him. Of course, he's not the only one who's been this way. Too many other people around the world have been raised within their cultures to fear living their lives without someone around using the threat of force. Because... Bad and crazy people exist. Officers of the growing police state, the policy enforcers, are far from righteous and noble as many believe them to be. Do any civilians around them ever feel safe in their presence? Do they defend them all the time from the common lowlifes who steal, rape, kill, and assault? Haven't state-run cops attacked anyone that hasn't committed any acts of aggression towards them. Don't they kill dogs that aren't in their canine units without any second thoughts? When lawmakers and law enforcers use coercion in the name of law and government, do they bear the same responsibility for their actions the same way anyone else would? Not according to statists who say, no, because they have powers that most people don't. Tell me more about these powers. Where do they come from? Anyone who believes that having a state is necessary for us to be civilized would explain, other people, because we let them have that power to enforce the laws. There are maniacs out there who slaughter people like animals. They wouldn't care. Laws exist so we don't end up killing each other. It's our duty to obey these laws. Yet it's part of how we contribute to society. Wouldn't that be claiming that morality comes from authority? What are these laws? The codes and rules printed in complicated wording through legislation? Would these maniacs they're worried about truly tremble in fear and obey every one of these all-powerful judgments backed by the threat of coercive force? If the thousands of laws were taught to children in schools, they wouldn't have 
time to learn about anything else. And it's impossible for anyone to uh, really keep track of all the laws that change over time. And if these judgments are so great, then why are they complicated to understand? To really understand what at least some of the legalese means, you'd have to look in a Black's Law dictionary to do so. Those who believe in and rely on government turn a blind eye to a very unfortunate truth. Many of the injustices that have happened throughout history had been carried out by groups who were just following orders, just doing as they were told to do, not thinking about what's wrong or right, and not questioning those orders. When it comes to obedience, it's just doing as you're told. So, no, morality does not come from authority. And what authority is, is this, giving certain people the power to rule over others. Synonym terms include command, control, dominance, and supremacy. Yeah, I, I know I've already said in part one about ethics that I would explain in two different ways as to how statism does not make sense to me. I'll be using present day information that's common knowledge about political representatives. Why are they acceptable by so many through the political process, but not through any other situation? Socialist communities vote for candidates by paper ballot or by using voting machines so that one of them can be elected to be president. The chosen leader and commander of USA Incorporated. They participate because they believe in this process and that the men and women who say they'll help provide for them represent them. Why would they say that these elected officials represent them? Because they're allowed to do things we're not allowed to do? If I went from door to door in my neighborhood telling them what they can and cannot do while saying that I'm representing them, they'd look at me as if I'd lost my mind. They tell me to leave. And some may get upset, say, I'm going to call the police if you don't leave. Politicians are humans like us. They breathe the same air as we do. So why are they allowed to be put in charge? Because, quote, consent of the governed? That term itself is a bizarre, contradictory phrase. A loaded term. When someone consents, then he or she agrees to do something voluntarily. Another word for govern is the word control. To consent and to be governed are often mutually exclusive. To consent to being governed by others rather than to be given the room for self-governance, wouldn't that be consenting to having each other enslaved within our current political system? Politicians are recognized by the larger majority as more than just human. They're allowed to be given these seemingly superhuman powers that is imagined by their voters to call for policies to be set in place. Authority in this way is a faith-based belief that certain groups of people are in the right to rule over others. If anyone disobeys the commandments of the ruling class laws, then they are deemed sinners and deserve to be punished and caged, be cuffed, treated like a criminal, and taken to prison. One of the most crazy things those subjected to authority say to justify and cling to these core beliefs they were told over and over again since childhood is, quote, we are the government. Well, do they get to write the laws? Do they get to boss others around? Do they get to take 
one of their own disobedient citizens away and lock them up in a cage. Do the voters get to do that? Those who aren't within the police, those who aren't legislators, those who aren't judges? If the answer is no to each of those questions, then they would be caught in being dishonest to themselves. Statism in this way is a cult religion, the ugly political religion. It is the most dangerous one of its kind. And this religion is through many forms, depending on how oppressive a government is and how big it is. Another way statism doesn't make sense to me is through this other analogy that I'll explain. Many of us know and understand on our own which behavior is good and which behavior is bad without having to look through law books, asking lawyers, or turning to politicians and bureaucrats for help. Yet, for some reason, many sometimes forget what is ethically and reasonably required to have communities of people who know how to get along with one another. I grew up around people who went to Alcoholics Anonymous. My dad has been sober for over 30 years. We both thoroughly understand about those who drink too much. On their own, they clearly can't obtain sobriety or even try to by staying drunk. I've seen enough movies that involve the theme alcoholism. The rational and good decision making are gone when alcoholics are heavily under the influence. They hurt themselves and anyone else around them, especially when they are incapable of knowing when to put away their beverage of choice. As for those who protest or advocate for more power from authority, it cannot be rationally nor morally consistent with themselves. They demand for individuals they don't like or agree with to be threatened or be put under obligation to do what they view as personally wrong to maintain peace within their communities. Negative emotions, fear, hate, etc. are dominant over good reasoning and decision making whenever this happens. It's and it's similar to whenever there are angry rioters in the streets. As they demand for others around them to be harmed and controlled under new laws and regulations, those who want those things are also harming themselves. If anyone's answer to any failure of government power is more government power, then they're similar to alcoholics who are trying to drink themselves sober. If we cannot be free to live in peace and be treated as self-owning individuals, then human civilizations are doomed to fail. If we can't trust people with liberty but with power, then we will never learn to improve ourselves. People behave stupidly and cowardly out of instinct when they are unable to control their own emotions. When they reason too much, they tend to act insensitive. What keeps people from being too stupid or too insensitive? Ethics and self-control. They sort of go together. If you've listened up to this point, then please share this information. Encourage people to educate themselves and free themselves from the lies that hold their minds and hearts hostage. Yeah, my bad for not uploading any podcasts or, or videos of my own in, in a while. Been really busy. I got more to do. I got some really interesting information to sort through and uh, take notes on. I'll be able to do the weekly live streams. As I said before in an announcement video, I'm going to try to not let my channel be just live streams. Take care, awesome friends and subscribers. Enjoy the holidays, even though crazy times are happening. Strange things are happening, ain't no doubt about it.